Welcome folks. One of the uh, topics we want to talk about real quick is uh, a nifty feature that's in Fusion 360. We find pretty useful in terms of uh, parametric modeling. In parametric you always used to have a lot of constraint issues where objects that you created were well controlled. So for example let's say I wanted to make some kind of uh, plate with a uh, pipe attached to it. Once I modeled this and placed these features together, I was pretty well constrained in terms of placement and shifting them apart. Well, one of the cool things that Fusion now has is the move feature, which allows you to move things after they're parametrically modeled. So for example, I could actually extrude this plate and then extrude this cylinder and then move it later on into place or slightly adjust it if I saw reason to. This gives you a lot more flexibility. Let me do a quick demo for you. I'll just create a, a sketch real fast. That looks good. Use a rectangle. We'll say it's going to be about yay big. And I'll extrude that rectangle. Okay. Now let's say for example that I want to go ahead and create my cylinder. And uh, I hit sketch here again. We'll create on the same plane. And I'll actually do a pipe. And we'll say it's going to be that big. Stop sketch. And we'll extrude it. And just for fun, I'll extrude it down. So, as you can see, these two parts are separate parts. They're not actually joined together. They're two different bodies, as you can see here we're over in the tree. And I'm going to use the move feature, the move modification, to relocate either the cylinder or the plate over. So I hit modify, hit move, and select my body. Now, at this point, we actually have the uh, multi-directional arrows and uh, free body movement, that kind of thing. So I can control the option to move it over a little bit, maybe switch to a little bit more of a top view, rotate it back, rotate it this way. I have a lot of control here. In fact, I can even kind of sort of freehand it in placement. But as you can see, it's not aligned up and I can always move it up after the fact. And it allows me to zoom in real close and see that, you know, I am now sort of submerged into the part. And have a good bind between the two, all the way around. And let's say that I want to shift it down just a little bit more. I'm going to grab the Z there, slide it down just a bit. You'll even notice that you start to see hidden lines appear on the edges where it's overlap, which is what we want. And I hit OK. And so now my two objects, which they are still two bodies, were extruded separately and actually moved, one parametrically moved in place without a lot of constraint issues and no big flags or anything like that. But you may notice that we can't do a lot of features in terms of fielding or champing around these edges until these two are combined together into one body. So what I can do for that, I can go to my um, combine feature, sorry, it's over here in modify, combine, and I can select this body and this body, uh, whichever one you selected doesn't really matter in this particular case, although one's considered the tool, one's considered the target. And I can tell it to join. At this point in time, we now have one body, and we should have a whole slew of features that we can accomplish or do with this. Such as the, uh, the fillet tool, the chamfer tool, just a quick demonstration. We're going to fill it, click on this edge set to maybe five or some other value and you see that it now works so that's the move tool super super handy there's other features associated with it too but from a practical standpoint this is a really great win for uh, customizing and uh, having a little bit more control of your parametric models so check it out find it uh, hopefully you find it pretty useful and uh, feel free to check out some of our other videos and training and tutorial tips on additive manufacturing and uh, also fusion. We'll see you.